Hey everyone, my name is Franklin Bray and I work in the Ed Lean Lab at the Allen Institute for Brain Science. For the last seven weeks, I had to leave a week early, as Dr. Ellen Bogan explained. Um, I want to begin my presentation by talking about single nucleus RNA sequencing. So this is the technique that basically allows us to see the gene expression levels um, in certain cell types, in very specific cell types. Um, Hodge et al. is a paper that shows us that we don't actually need the entire cell to understand what's going on and to subtype cells, that we all only actually need the RNA. So this entire process comes up by getting a brain sample, homogenizing it, which means breaking it down to small bits, um, going through a few gradient steps where you separate out the different areas that you want, and putting it through a fax machine, which means that you stay in your sample first, put it for a fax machine, and then you get, after analysis, these plots that you can see at the bottom of the screen. What I want to um, bring to your attention is this small spot here. We can see excitatory, which is this huge population here, a smaller population inhibitory, and this small, very small population, which makes up about 1% or less than 1% in most um, UMAPs, which is a non-neuronal population. So how do we change, how do we, enrich the population of non-neuronal cells. This is where VineC comes in, which is vessel isolation and nuclear extraction for sequencing. So a general introduction to VineSeq. It was established by Dr. Andrew Yang, who is a professor at a medical school, um, Stanford Medical School. And his technique, um, the goal of his technique was to increase the representation of the nuclei from vascular cells for RNA sequencing from postmodern um, brain tissue. His paper showed, once he had used this technique, that 30 to 45 of the genes, the top genes that are linked to Alzheimer's could be found in the human brain vasculature and could contribute to your AD risk. So that said, my goal at the Allen Institute was to establish this method in their lab so that they could do similar studies um, and run similar analysis. I also wanted to bring your attention to this um, figure from his paper. This green population, so we, we're moving from this small population that you saw in the first figure to this, where it's like 36.8% of the UMAP representing non-neuronal and specifically vascular cells, or nuclei from vascular cells. So the first stage in this entire process is called vessel isolation. Um, first, like I said, for normal RNA sequencing, you take your brain sample, you homogenize it. For this experiment, we use a dextrin gradient which allowed us to get a pellet, this small pellet at the bottom, which is what we want. We go through centralization twice to get what we want. And the product is kind of this. You get a sample, you dye it, and you look at it under a microscope, and this is what you would see. This is the vascular that is normally lost in normal um, nuclear isolation techniques. But what I also want to point out is these small dots in the background, which are nuclei that we don't really want from neurons, from other cells in the brain. We want to remove that. So what we use is a filtering step. And in this filtering step, we apply the sample, which has been downed and gone through the spinning step. We resuspend the pellet and we put it on a filter. And then we wash that filter with PBS, with a blocking buffer, to basically wash away all those other um, nuclei that we don't really want and to keep the idea is that the vessels would remain on top of the filter and all the other nuclear answer that we want would wash out into this bottom fluid that you see here. Once we have this filter and the nuclei, the, sorry, the vasculature is on top of the filter, we need to get the vasculature from that filter. And we do that using a shaker method, which um, my lab and I kind of created on the fly. Basically, you put the filter in a vacuum tube and you shake it for 30 minutes. I'm doing it manually here because the shaker tray that we normally use was being used by another lab at the time, another researcher at the time. But basically, I spun that for 30 minutes manually. And then the result is this, where we have a much more concentrated population of vasculature. And we also have all that back, all those background nuclei and so that we don't really want in our analysis completely gone. This... When we finally got this photograph, I was jumping around my lab because this this was about the product of like four weeks 
of troubleshooting and everything and finding out what was working and what was not working. Um, but everyone was in a meeting, so I was just jumping around alone. Um, so pre-shaker method, this is what we would have. Where you would still have all this background, but basically this is a picture from the flow through of everything that would fall through. And we would wash so much that we would have the nuclei going through, but we would also have our vasculature job breaking up. So instead of staying on the filter where we want it, it would fall through in this small fragment that you can see at the bottom. I think you can see a little bit here and we don't want that. So the shaker method was really a big improvement and a big step towards getting what we actually wanted. Right. So these are fax plots. Fax plots are, sorry. Okay, right. So fax plots are fluorescence activated cell sodden. It's a machine that uses light, um, shoots beams of light at cells, and basically uses that to determine what type of cell they are once you have stained them with special antibodies. So this top population uh, represent neurons, the neuron population. Um, this would be oligodendrocytes, and this would be all the non-neuronal nuclei that we have in our sample. And what you would see is that this is the population that we would normally get when we use Dr. Yang's method. And we were like, what's going on? Why do we have all these neurons? Why do we have all these oligodendrocytes? And what we did with one of our methods, one of, before we actually finalized anything, which we still haven't, um, is that we were able to greatly reduce the amount of neurons that we got on nuclei from neurons greatly reduce that oligodendrocyte, oligodendrocyte population um, whilst maintaining a decently sized non-neuronal population. So as you can see, the general population of nuclei that we have is reduced and we're working on maintaining the size of that population. But as we lose neurons and as we lo lose um, oligodendrocytes, we are bound to lose um, overall population numbers. So the future of VineSeq, so now that we're able to isolate vasculature, the Allen Institute is working on nuclei extraction techniques. Because now that we, we basically have the cells, now we need to work on breaking up those membranes and keeping those nuclei intact, maintaining the integrity of the RNA inside of them so that we can do analysis for um, Alzheimer's research. An example of a solution that we have thought up is of using syringes to suck up and break up the nuclei. Um, the, sorry, the cells whilst maintaining the, um, the nuclei, the integrity of the nuclei. We're also looking at using stronger detergents to break apart tissue. Um, and we're also, part of my project was going to be, before we found out how troublesome this whole process would be, protocol would be, would be to use VineSeq to analyze the vasculature of persons with and without, Alzi um, without Alzheimer's as a way of basically um, confirming the results of Dr. Yang's um, paper. I did not know I would have this much time. So I'm going to go back and talk about this for a second. Here in the shaker method, we use detergent in the vacuum bottle to break up, to basically destroy the nuclei in there, which is how we were able to get this clean presentation here. The detergent in here is basically destroying everything that we don't want. And what we basically found is that the vascular cells are basically indestructible. Nothing will destroy them, not stronger detergents, not manual force, using a plunger of any sort of anything. Um, we've thought about using time. We've given them like 10 minutes, 15 minutes with strong detergent, and they remain basically impervious to any form of attack. Uh, so that's my presentation, basically. It's very different from everyone else's because my project was basically working on maintaining I'm basically establishing a method. This picture shows these little fragments that you see that look like scratches on the bottle are actually broken apart pieces of vasculature that survived detergent, have survived mashing, have survived everything that we have thought to throw at them. So this is where we are right now. And we're working on breaking those apart, getting those nuclei out, maintaining that RNA integrity, and hopefully um, confirming the results of Dr. Yang's paper. I would like to thank everyone in my lab, Dr. Ed Lean for having me in his lab, Dr. Rebecca Hodge for being here and well, for being there um, for me throughout the weeks, Jeremy, who taught me everything I know about RNA analysis, even though I didn't get to use it because of the timeline of our project. But 
he was with me every week. And JT, who was in the lab with me almost every single day, um, helped with my ideas and everything. I also like to thank Nadia, who was there with me for when we did our um, fax plots. She explained everything to me about how fax plot works and everything. Okay. And Al, who greeted me at the door every day. I like to thank the NIH and the Nordheim interns for supporting me when I came back basically home every day. And I'm like, my experiment failed again. <laughs> um, so thank you guys. Um, I would like to thank Dr. Ellen Bogan, um, Mrs. Ellen Bogan, um, Julie and Sylvia for everything. They were so helpful in everything. Um, Jim Pridget, um, Dr. McDonald, who was so motivational every time we saw her. Um, yeah, thank you.